Hello and welcome to week one, getting started for the course in action in the creation framework for SAP Business One. My name is Mario Fetzner and I'm working in the solution expert department for SAP Business One. I'm supporting SAP Business One partners in product enablement and pre-sales activities. In this unit, I will tell you about the course overview and structure. The integration framework of SAP Business One is a platform for developing and running integration solutions between SAP Business One and other systems. In this four-week course, you will learn how to use the integration framework to create, test and run integration scenarios. In this course, you will see the integration framework for SAP Business One in action. You will get experience in developing integration solutions for customers and you can take this course at two levels. First, watch the videos for each unit and test your understanding by taking the quizzes. Second, in addition, sign up for a test system and get hands-on practice using guided exercises. Then, explore the integration framework on your own. This Open SAP course is structured in four weeks. Week one, getting started. Week two, scenario design basics. Week three, integrating to SAP Business One. And week four, integrating SAP Business One companies. Each week consists of lecture and demos, self-test to test your knowledge after every unit, and optional hands-on exercises. At the end, there will be a final exam to test the knowledge you have achieved after the four weeks course. Of course, there will be discussions and online forums during the whole course. From course rating perspective, you can achieve a maximum of 30 points per week. The final exam is graded with 120 points, which is in total 240 points. Integration solutions typically bridge systems running different communication protocols. And to facilitate this, they convert and process data internally in extensible markup language, XML. The integration framework is no different and you need a good working knowledge of XML in order to develop integration solutions. Take the quiz to access your XML knowledge if you need more information on XML, you can complete the XML tutorial while accessing this web page. If you want to have access to a test system, you can sign up for a test system in the cloud. The test system is available at very low cost for a month. The system is pre-configured with SAP Business One, the integration framework and the test database. Take advantage of this unique opportunity to get hands-on time using the integration framework. During this course, you will see integration scenarios that involve structured query language, SQL, hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, and JavaScript object notation, JSON. If you have limited experience of the above, Click the links to visit the respective sites to learn more. Thank you for attending this unit. Hello and welcome to week one, getting started for the course in action integration framework for SAP Business One. My name is Mario Fetzner and in this unit we will have a quick look at the integration framework market focus. When completing this unit you are able to describe common requirements for integration involving a small business. Learn about SAP Business One and the integration framework component and explain the concept of a scenario. First I want to give you some integration examples for a small business. A small business is not an island. A small business might be a subsidiary or franchisee of a larger business. There could be a need for master data to be replicated from the point of creation to a headquarters system. There might also be a need for consolidating the accounting 
and rolling up financial results to headquarters, financial consolidation. An example could be a car dealership. This kind of tight integration involves extending a business process across multiple disparate systems that may each run different applications and APIs. All these businesses can connect to the integration framework. Some small businesses may be part of the supply chain for another business and might need to conform to data interchange standards set by the other business. Tight integration would be needed to ensure that whenever a sales order is generated on the main business, a purchase order is also sent electronically to the supplier to order the goods needed to fulfill the sales order. This involves the exchange of transactions between the two systems. In the third example, a small business has its own ecosystem, where it needs to involve other businesses in its business processes. For example, a small business might purchase raw materials from supplies and sell finished products to customers. In the connected world, small businesses need to integrate with other entities in order to compete in today's global business climate. Examples are point of sale, close collaboration with, with part suppliers or customers, communicating electronically with tax authorities. Our small business will most certainly have to interact with government and other official entities. Perhaps they need to develop an e-commerce site. Let us have a look at SAP Business One and the integration framework. SAP Business One is a fully functioning enterprise resource planning application, EOP, specifically designed and priced for small businesses. SAP Business One is really like an integration platform for a company's complete core business processes. SAP Business One integrates all business management functionality, sales, purchasing, accounting, inventory management, production, service and analytics in a single database. So all the data is already integrated in the database, which makes using it for integration much easier. SAP Business One is used by customers in over 150 countries and around the world in 27 languages. While SAP provides 43 localizations for the product, our partners have adapted these localizations to fit the needs of many other countries. This means that you can use the integration framework to connect businesses globally. SAP Business One is designed for partners to extend the core functionality using the SDK and service layer APIs. The integration framework is part of the SAP Business One solution stack and enables SAP Business One to send, publish and exchange data with external systems and applications to access or consume data from external data providers. The integration framework uses the SDK and service layer APIs to integrate to and from SAP Business One. The integration framework serves as an integration hub and is designed specifically for small businesses. It runs on Windows and or Linux and has a low overhead and small footprint. It is simple to install and easy to get up and running. Yet, at the same time, it is robust and scalable. It provides the necessary error handling, tracking and logging, which allows the consultant to focus on the business logic needed for the integration. The integration framework can support exchange requests and data between many different systems running concurrently. Importantly, it uses established integration standards such as extensible markup language, XML, and extensible stylesheet language transformation, XSLT. At runtime, the framework automatically converts incoming data to XML format. XML is a natural language for integration purposes because it is vendor neutral and machine readable. Therefore, you don't need to understand appropriate APIs. You can use the integration framework to connect to SAP and non-SAP systems, as well as a wide selection of systems and services, including web and cloud applications. 
SAP Business One is able to integrate easily to large SAP systems as a subsidiary or a supplier to larger systems. Scenarios are developed to implement an integration solution on top of the integration framework platform. A scenario models the business integration requirement from end to end. You define scenarios in the user interface of the integration framework. As a technical consultant, you can define new scenarios to meet the specific integration needs of a customer. No programming knowledge is needed to develop these scenarios. These scenarios are easily transported and plugged into the customer system. All scenarios use the underlying platform services such as flow of data, error handling, logging and tracking and guaranteed delivery of data. As mentioned previously, all data enter entering the integration framework is converted to XML. This is made possible by adapters for various connectivity types. Several predefined scenarios are provided and can be run out of the box after you install SAP Business One. Starting clockwise from the top left, standard integration scenarios for SAP Business One. A list of the scenarios is shown here and includes the support for dashboards and mobile apps within SAP Business One and integrations to the Ariba network, to SAP Hybris Cloud for customer and SAP Customer Checkout. To find out more about these provided scenarios, you can access them from the Integration Framework User Interface and find documentation on how to run them. Subsidiary Integration Scenarios These scenarios are available for customers and provide comprehensive integration between SAP Business One and SAP ECC, uh, SAP BW or S4HANA systems. In the company integration scenarios, these scenarios are available for purchase by customers and provide comprehensive integration between SAP Business One databases. Possible integration scenarios. This is the focus for this open SAP course and allows you to develop your own scenarios to integrate SAP Business One to non-SAP systems, to web and cloud applications and services and so on. To summarize this unit, small businesses need to integrate with other systems, as subsidiaries, as suppliers and within their own ecosystem. The integration framework for SAP Business One is a cost-effective, robust platform for developing and running small business integration solutions. This is provided with the SAP Business One license at no extra charge. The integration framework follows established integration standards, such as extensible markup language, XML, extensible stylesheet language transformation, XSLT, and web standards such as HTTP. Scenarios implement the business integration requirements and run on top of the integration framework platform, where they make use of the error handling, logging and tracking, and guaranteed delivery of data. You can easily and quickly define integration scenarios using the inbuilt development platform to provide your small business clients with custom integration solutions, integrate your own solutions or add-ons for a small business. In the next unit, you will see how the integration framework works internally, including the use of XML. Thank you for attending this unit. Hello and welcome to week one, getting started for the course in action, Integration Framework for SAP Business One. My name is Mario Fetzner and in this unit I will tell you how the Integration Framework works. When completing this unit, you are able to describe the use of extensible markup language, XML, in the Integration Framework and list the main payload types in an XML message. We introduced scenarios in the previous unit. 
The scenario is essentially a container for one or more steps. The logic for the integration is implemented at a step level. Each step represents a specific integration flow of data, for example, from a sender system to a receiver system, or a request to an application or service with a response. If the flow of data is very simple, only one step is needed. If the flow of data is complex, you can break it down into multiple steps. Each step responds to a trigger, which might be a timer, an event from SAP Business One, or call from an external system sender. The step executes when triggered. You can also trigger a step by calling it from another step. Steps are either asynchronous or synchronous. An asynchronous step transmits data from a sender system to a receiver system. A synchronous step makes a request to another system or receives a request from another system. There is no receiver system involved. Note, the step can perform other processing in addition to the transmission of data. You will see examples of this in weeks 2 to 4. A scenario step, when triggered, runs as three different phases. The first phase is the inbound phase. In the inbound phase, calls or events retrieves the data from the sender using a predefined adapter. The adapter is selected, is selected when the scenario step is defined. The integration framework provides different adapters to handle the conversion of data from various proprietary APIs to XML format. Some examples of adapters include JDBC, HTTP and so on. When a timer is defined as a trigger, then an adapter is not necessary. The timer starts the process after the defined time settings. The adapter converts the incoming data to XML messages, which are processed by the next phase. The integration framework always processes the data internally as an XML message, whatever the format of the incoming data is. The inbound phase hands over the XML message to the next phase, the processing phase. The handover from phase to phase is done via internal queues. The XML message containing the data is processed by the integration framework. Depending on how the step is configured, there might be calls to external systems or conditional processing. These calls might result in a change or enhancements to the data. At some point in the processing, the data is transformed into the XML format required by the receiving system, asynchronous step only. The rules for the data, the rules for the data transformation were defined by the scenario developer using XSLT, Extensible Stylesheet Language Transformations. The data is still in XML format throughout the processing phase. The processing phase may perform other functions in addition to transforming the data. This depends on the business scenario. The final phase is the outbound phase. As soon as a receiver is defined, then the outbound phase only applies to asynchronous steps, in which there is a receiver system for the transformed data. If the whole process is managed inside of the processing phase, then there is an outbound and a receiver definition is not possible. The outbound phase receives the final XML from the processing phase and the outbound adapter converts the data into the actual non-XML format required by the receiver. The adapter hands over the final data to the logical receiver system. The integration framework handles the transmission of the data reliably over the network. XML is a natural choice for integration as it was designed to describe and carry data in both a human and machine-readable format. Using self-interpretive text makes XML almost a universal data format and a natural choice for open data interchange. XML documents contain elements within text. If you are familiar with HTML, then an XML document will look familiar. In XML, the markup 
is contained within the tags and the content is outside of the tags. XML always begins with a start tag element and ends with an end tag element. So let's look at the actual message from the integration framework. The XML message that the integration framework processes during a step contains different sections that are added along the way to produce the final message for the outbound phase. The body tag is what we are most interested in, as this contains the data within payload tags. There are different payload sections added at each phase of step processing. The payload types of the XML message depend to some extent on the step design, but can include type T, contains a description of the trigger for the step, type S, contains, contains the incoming data from the sender converted to XML, type X, shows any internal transformation of the sender message. This section only appears if you have designed a scenario to include an intermediate transformation during the step processing phase. Type C shows information regarding a call from the step to an external system. For example, a call to a SQL database. In this case, the result set from the query will be also shown. The type R section contains the final XML message at the end of the step processing. The type R2 section shows the receiver message in XML that will be handed over to the outbound adapter. This section is not completed until the final transformation of data. To summarize this unit, step processing involves three phases, inbound, processing and outbound. The integration framework converts all data it receives to XML messages and processes data internally as XML messages. Additional payload sections are added to the XML message during step processing. This can include external calls to enrich the data as well as the transformation of the data into a final XML representation. The final XML is handed over to the outbound phase and the adapter for transmission. In the next unit, you will see how to set up the integration framework as a development environment to start your scenario development. Thank you for attending this unit. Hello and welcome to week one, getting started for the course in action, integration framework for SAP Business One. My name is Miriam Rieger and I'm working in the rollout team for SAP Business One. I'm responsible for the rollout of different integration solutions, like the integration framework for SAP Business One, the intercompany integration solution and other provided integration scenarios. In this unit, I will tell you about the development environment. The objectives for this unit are to explain the differences between the development and productive environments of the integration framework and to switch between these two profiles, the development and productive. The integration framework features a web browser based user interface. This user interface is the same for both operations, administration and scenario development. There are two different profiles available, a productive profile and a development profile. The productive profile covers the control and monitoring of running scenarios, as well as the import and activation of scenarios into a customer environment. The development profile includes the building blocks for defining the scenario inbound, processing and outbound phases. In this profile, the development profile, the integration framework provides an internal embedded XML editor, as well as internal tools for testing and debugging. The username B1I admin is predefined when you install the integration framework. After the installation, 
it is also possible to create more users with different roles and privileges, such as administration and deployment. The integration framework can operate in one of two modes, also called profiles, either as a productive system or as a development system. This is controlled by the system profile. A system profile brings together the recommended configuration settings in one place, optimized for a productive system or a development system. Each mode has a color-coded upper line. As you can see on this slide, it's blue when you are working in the productive mode and a golden color when working in the development mode. After the installation, when you are opening the integration framework, the first time it opens in the productive mode. If you want to, te to create and test new scenarios, you need to switch the system profile to a development system. The development mode contains the recommended configuration settings for scenario development, testing and debugging. Please take care to work in the correct mode. It's very easy to switch between development and productive mode. After you have made the switch, you need to restart the integration service to take effect. For running the integration framework in productive mode or for developing scenarios, each system profile contains recommended and predefined settings. Because these, just, these are just recommendations, you can change any of the settings at any time if you need. These can be handled very flexible. As mentioned in the slide before, a restart of the integration service is necessary to take effect. In this slide, I want to point out some of the settings. The session timeout value, as you can see here, is 20 minutes for a logged-in user in the productive profile. In the development profile, it's 500 minutes. Support for a remote web dev client, such as an external XML editor, is enabled in the development profile, not in the productive profile by default settings. A development prefix can be set in the development mode. This is only applicable in the scenario development and there you can enter a three-character string. This string will be added to the scenario name of all scenarios that you create. This allows you to identify scenarios developed by your company. To add a prefix, it's recommended. If you don't add a prefix, the system uses a set instead of the prefix. Before you create a scenario package and steps, you should decide on the prefix and a naming convention for your scenarios. Scenarios from SAP can be identified by the prefix SAP. If you want to modify a scenario, you do this in the development profile. Scenarios can also be modified in the production profile, but it's not possible to test them. Debugging a scenario is only possible in the development profile. It's not available in the productive mode. Detailed logging should be avoided as it can degrade system performance. But for a development environment, it is advantageous to log all details for a running scenario. In the default settings, the XML and XSL files are able to open in a productive mode too but they will be shown in a web browser. The embedded XML editor is disabled in the productive profile. It's only enabled in the development profile in the default settings. Let's go to the system and have a look on this. Here you can see my system and when you open your system by the, f the first time, you are working in the productive mode, as you can see here with the blue colored upper line. If you want to develop a scenario, we recommend to change the productive mode to the development mode. 
You can do it here under Maintenance. And there you have the system info. And here you see that the system profile is at the moment productive system. Before I change it, I want to show you also here in the configuration message log, as you saw on the slides, that when you are in the productive mode, that you have here the log level, it's only an info set. To change it, you can do it here, change it to full message, but I want to keep it in the productive mode to have only an info set. To change the system to the development profile, I go to System Info, I select here the development system, and I confirm that I want to change it to the, this message that I want to change to the development system. And I get another message from the system that I manually restart of the integration service it's necessary. So, I go here to the services. In the services, I go a little bit down to the integration service and I restart them. Can close this window and I have to restart the integration framework again. It takes a few seconds. Just log on again and you see that the color has changed from blue to golden and when we go under maintenance to Just a second to system info. You see that we are now in the development system. If you are do some changes here under system info, you have to restart the integration services to take it to take effect. I want to click on this button and there you see this, the differences between the productive environment and the development environment. As you saw on the slides, it's the session timer of 20 or 500 minutes. Here there are um, the log level, it's only info set for the development, it's full message. And we have here also some topics activated like the message log, B1 event monitor or here record, uh, test messages, allow active step modification for the development environment. On the productive environment you see this setting, the local access only, and this means that you have to work in the local machine to have access to the system. You see also some of them uh, settings, of these settings here, which we saw. Also on different places here, for example, in the de configuration of development environment, as I've shown you some uh, few seconds before in the message log, you see here the settings. And here is also, um, you have also the possibility to change the development prefix. if. You decided your naming convention, you can enter these three digits, three um, characters in this field, just save it and you have it. And when you create scenario, the system always um, adds this prefix to your scenario name. Let's go back to the slides. And in this unit, you learned about the two different modes, the productive and development profile. You also learned to switch between these two profiles. In the next unit, you will learn about the BizStore, which is the logical database where scenarios are stored. Thank you for attending this unit and see you in the next unit. Bye bye.
Hello and welcome to week one, getting started for the course in action integration framework for SAP Business One. My name is Miriam Riga and in this unit I will tell you about working with the BIS store. The objective of this unit is to define the purpose of the BIS store database and how to exit it. In the previous unit, you saw that the integration framework features a web browser-based user interface. The architecture of the integration framework includes a relational database as a persistent store for deploy developed solutions. There is a logical interface layer called the BIS store. The BIS store is the XML persistency layer and logical storage. When a scenario is created, it is stored in the BizStore together with the respective XML documents. There are two ways to access the stored scenarios and XML documents. The first way is using the embedded XML editor. The integration framework has a built-in rudimentary XML editor that can be used to modify XML documents for a scenario. You invoke this XML editor from the browser interface. The second way is using an external XML editor. You can use your prefer preferred XML editor if it supports WebDAV. When you use a WebDAV XML editor, you access the BizStore layer directly. To access the BizStore, you typically use a URL and then browse for the appropriate scenario. Using a WebDAV tool also gives you the option to develop your scenarios offline by downloading the documents from the BizStore, updating them offline and then uploading them to the BizStore. When you access the BizStore directly from a WebDAV tool, you will see a structure similar to the structure shown here with different expandable nodes. This view of the BizStore folders is not available when you use the embedded XML editor. I will just show it later in the demo. Scenario packages are stored in the com.sap.b1i.scenarios.design area of the BizStore. You will also see it later. Scenario packages are identified with the prefix wepack and the development prefix you entered. In this example, it's a scenario package wepack.sap.icpurchasing. The scenario steps are identified with the prefix ybiu, business integration unit. You should develop a naming convention so that your scenario packages are easy to locate. Let's go to the demo to see the BizStore. I will switch to my system. As I said in the slides, you have two, possibili or two possibilities to enter the XML editor. The first one is that you use the external XML editor. For this one, I'm using here Cyberduck to enter it and we enter the BIS store. You see it here, you see the folder structure. And as I said in the slides before, you find your scenarios here under scenarios.design. When I open it, you see the first level these are the data sets. I will move a little bit down. You see here many data sets. Here are some of our units um, we will create later. But you also see some of the SAP scenarios. Let's move a little bit down. For example, here with the POS. This is for the point of sales solution. And Let's go up to my scenario 
And when I open it here, you see the groups and the related documents here. If you want to work with the external editor, you go to the relevant document and you open it. Not here, just a second. By using, in my example, I'm using here notebook to edit notepad to edit this, um, this document. This is the external editor. Let's go to the integration framework itself. There you find the internal XM editor here under tools. And here you have the XML editor. When you're using the internal editor, you really have to know each node. There's not this structure, this folder structure as we saw in the CyberDuck. Here you have to select each node individually. We have also to move down to the scenarios design. Then I say select. Then I have to choose the scenario. I take this one, say select. And the respective document. Let's take this one, say select. And then I can click on open. And this is the internal um, embedded XML editor. If you are using the internal um, XML editor, you can also add this view directly from the process. This means when you are working in a scenario, let's move to scenarios and step design, you have to select the scenario, I take this one, and when I go to processing, I have here each atom, and then you can go directly to the atom, and if you clicking on, click on it, and you see the internal XML editor, and you can work here also. It's the same as, we, as you saw um, before here, via tools, and the XML editor. During your work, when you're creating new scenarios, all of them are stored in the BIS store. So let's go back to the slides. And in this unit, you learned about the BIS store, the logical database. You can open and edit XML documents from the BIS store, from the browser interface. The documents will open in the embedded XML browser, which is a rudimentary XML tool. You can use a fully functioning external WebDAV XML editor to access the BIS store structure directly. And in the next unit, you will learn about the scenario building blocks that are provided for you to define scenarios. Thank you for attending this unit and see you hopefully in the next unit. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to week one, getting started for the course in action Integration Framework for SAP Business One. My name is Miriam Rieger and in this unit I will tell you about the scenario building blocks. The objectives in this unit are to describe the overall process for defining a scenario and to explain the building blocks for defining a scenario step. The development environment of the integration framework allows you to develop scenarios using point and click options by selecting from drop-down menus. No programming expertise is needed to develop a scenario. To define a new scenario, 
The first thing is to define the package and provide a name. The prefix that you specified in the development profile will be added to the package name. Then define each scenario step and associate it to the package name. For each scenario step, define the inbound, outbound and processing phases. The outbound definition is only required for asynchronous steps, where data is sent to a sender system. A step models a specific interaction between two systems. These interactions can be synchronous or asynchronous, and you can have a mix of synchronous or asynchronous steps in the package. For a simple business process with a single interaction, there will be just one step. For a more complex business process with multiple interactions, there can be several steps. A synchronous communication is a direct communication between the involved parties. It follows a request-response pattern. The sender, the caller, makes a request which triggers the step processing. The processing may make calls to external systems to enrich the data. The result of the processing phase is handed back to the caller as a response immediately. The result has to be handed back promptly during the step processing, otherwise it will run into an error. Asynchronous communication is triggered by an incoming event, call or by a timer. During the inbound phase, the data is retrieved from the sender system. The step processing may make calls to external system to enrich the data. The data is transformed and passed to the outbound phase for the receiver system at any time. In the design for the step, you decide how the step will be triggered, which system types communicate with each other, how the integration framework will transform the message, and if any other processing will occur, such as calls to external systems. The inbound channel describes the type of sender system and you can select the API that the integration framework will use to retrieve the incoming data. The inbound channel options are HTTP, file, void if the scenario is triggered by a timer, web service, SAP Business One and SAP ERP. Please be aware some inbound channels are only available in newer releases. The outbound channel describes the type of receiver system and you can select the API that the integration framework will use to hand over the data. The outbound channel options are the same as the inbound channel options. Web service, HTTP, file, database, void for synchronous steps, SAP Business One and SAP ERP. For the processing phase, you select atoms using a graphical design tool, as you can see it here in the picture on this slide. Atoms are predefined functional units that you can assemble into a sequence. Atoms can be used for calling an external system, such as an SQL database or email. Each atom receives the inbound message, performs its tasks, and hands over an outbound message to the next atom. In the BizFlow Designer, you can define the step processing in the integration framework. Initially, the processing flow contains a start and end control structure with a single atom in the middle. This is a transformation atom that you can use to format the data into the final format for the receiver or caller. The name of this atom is final. This atom provides an extensible stylesheet language file, XLS, that you use to transform the data into the final structure for the receiver or caller. This aspect will be covered in more detail in the next unit. You can select additional atoms to add to the processing. 
to add an atom, choose the arrow in the start control structure. A list of available atoms will open and you can choose from the list. Each atom also contains an arrow so that you can add subsequent atoms to the processing flow. Let's go to the system and see how it works. In the system you go to Scenarios and Package Design. And to add a new scenario you click on this plus icon here. And then we create a new scenario and we add here the name. In my example I would call it Open SAP Scenario. And I click on the tab. Then the system automatically enters or adds the defined prefix, it's edu in my system, to the scenario name. I select here in the field authentication, no authentication. And then I can save this new scenario. Then I go to Step Design and here I have to select my scenario. Here I have my open SAP scenario and then I can enter here a name for the scenario step. Here you define the inbound the inbound channel. And the outbound on this side. When I click on processing, the BIS flow opens and I see here the final atom. To add a new atom, I click on this gray arrow and I can select from the list which kind of atom I want to add. It's in this case I want to call SQL. I select this and I add this new atom to the process. Then I can close the window and this new atom is added to the process. Then I have to, when I finished all everything, I have to save this definition. If you want to delete a scenario, you go under package design, but first you have to be sure to have to work in the correct prefix. Then you can select the scenario which you want to delete and you click on the trash icon to delete this scenario. The first message here is about the deletion and I say yes I want to or okay I want to delete it and the second message system message is um, about archiving that it's recommended to archive the package. If you don't want to archive the package then click on cancel and the scenario package is now deleted. Let's go back to the slides and in this unit you learned the overall process for defining a scenario. It is define the package, define a step and associate it with the package and then define the inbound, outbound and processing phases of the step. To make simple selections from the building blocks, the inbound channel processing and outbound channels. Using the BISflow designer where you can easily add atoms to the processing flow. In the next unit you will see how to transform data using the transformation atom. Thank you for attending this unit and see you in the next unit. Bye bye!
Hello and welcome to week one, getting started for the Open SAP course in Action, Integration Framework for SAP Business One. My name is Anne-Marie Kiefer. I'm a member of the Integration Framework development team and in my role as a user assistance development architect, I'm providing all documentation for the Integration Framework. In this unit, I will give you an introduction to data transformation. The objective of this unit is to explain the process for transforming the XML message during integration framework processing and to present some XSL statements that are commonly used in data transformation. The XML message needs to be converted so that it describes the output structure of the data required by the receiver system. For example, your input data from the sender might be a flat file structure, however, your receiver system only accepts the data in a different structure, for example, in a three-level hierarchy. In the process flow of a scenario step, you are working in XML. You transform the data in the XML message into an XML representation of what the receiver or caller expects. When you create a scenario step, a transformation atom called atom zero or final transformation atom is automatically provided for you. The transformation atom has a pre-configured XSL file. It is attached. XSL is a style sheet language for XML documents. You can use XSL transformation statements to convert an XML file into another format, such as, for example, HTML. In the integration framework, however, we use XSL transformation statements to transform the XML message being processed. When you define a scenario, you add your data transformation statements to the Atom XSL file. In synchronous scenarios, this is the response message the integration framework returns to the original sender or caller. In asynchronous scenarios, this is the message the integration framework hands over to the outbound adapter before it is sent to the receiver system or systems. At runtime, the XSL transformation adds an extra payload section to the XML message, payload type R for receiver. You can also add more transformation atoms anywhere in the step process to enrich the XML message further during step processing. XSLT is a language for transforming an XML document from one format to another. The transformation statements are written as template rules. When writing your transformation rules with XSLT, you can also use XPath and XQuery. These three languages are closely interwined. XPath or XML path language uses path expressions to navigate through an XML document. In the integration framework, you use XPath expressions to navigate to XML elements in the message, such as a specific field in the sender payload section. XQuery or XML query language allows you to perform queries on the XML data in the message. We are not using XML query in the integration framework. If you want to have further information, the links to the tutorials on XSLT, XPath and XQuery are shown here. Let's look <coughs> at an example of XSL transformation. It is a very simple example. We will convert the sender payload XML into a receiver message. 
The, mes the sender message has a structure with header and lines as nodes. The receiver message has a different structure with a new element and with other names and a flatter structure. For the receiver XML, we first design a root tag called RCV MSG or receiver message. We define two new elements, account no for account number and name, and use the XSL transformation statement value of select to extract the values from the sender message elements in this new elements. We use an XPath expression called SND MSG for sender message header field one to navigate to the field one node in the sender XML message. Note, XSL stylesheet elements can be written without end tags if the element is nested within another element. In the example XSL, value of select ends with a slash and greater sign. And there is no end tag because the element is self-closing. Next, we declare a variable called line count and assign to it the count of the number of line nodes in the sender message. The result is two. We use an XPath expression to navigate to the line node. We define a new element, line count, and use the XSL value of select to extract the count from the variable into the receiver XML using the count function. When using a variable, add a dollar sign in front of the variable name. We use the if test XSL statement to make sure there are line nodes in the sender message. Note that if you use the greater than character as greater than, you must use the annotation ampersand GT. Otherwise, the XML parser will interpret this as an element tag and you will get an error. Then we use the XSL for each statement to select and loop through the line nodes in the sender message using XPath to navigate to the line node. For each line element in the sender message, we define an element called RCV line. Within this element, we define new elements quantity and product and extract the value of each field from the line element. We use a relative path here, dot slash, to access the sender fields since we have already navigated to the line node before. Now <coughs> let me come to an online demo. I open my integration framework for this and I just want to show you what it looks like when you are cre creating a new scenario step. I click the plus and call it new step, save it. And when I now click the processing, you can see exactly what you've seen before in the presentation that we have a final transformation atom here generated automatically. If I click this area then an XML processor opens and you can then go to this XML processor, uh, XML editor and add your XSL statements here. Always use the template transform section all the other sections belong to the integration framework and you should not touch them. Here you can also see the name and where it is stored in the BIS store. So here you have the Atom Zero XSL. 
Let me show you now our small example that we saw in the presentation. I, he I have here the final transformation atom. And you can see here <coughs> what I added to come from the sender message to the receiver message. You see here that I use a variable $MSG, which I wouldn't use in um, an XML processor. I use it here in the integration framework context. It is defined in each XSL atom as the variable that represents the incoming sender message. So if I run a test here, I see my incoming message. See it here, sender message, header, field one, field two, lines, line, and so on and so forth. And if I click the next red arrow, I see how this message has been transformed by the XSL T in the atom zero. So if you want to see it without the context of the integration framework, you can do that as well, because under Tools and Control Center Development, we have here a point that says Execute Style Sheets. I can go to the BIS store, to the design area, select my transform and here in atom one I have defined everything without the dollar message in front of the XPath statements and now I can also select an incoming message that is then being executed for this transformation. I submit it. And if I click here, then the outbound document, you see here the receiver message that we have already seen in the presentation. Just one word to the XSL documents. When you are working here, you probably do not have a straightforward approach to enter all the different atoms. Um, it can happen that you delete an atom from a process flow and if it is a transformation atom, then we do not automatically delete the attached XSL document. This is why we do not want to delete your developments. However, if you are sure that you do not need these XSL documents that are no longer attached to a transformation atom, we have here this function that helps you to remove the XSL style sheets that you no longer use and they are removed from the BIS store. So let us go back to our presentation. Here is a summary of this unit. The data in the XML message that the, the integration framework processes is transformed using XSL statements, such as, for example, XSL value of select for extracting the value from an element, XSL for each select 
for navigating nodes in the XML message or XSL variable for defining a variable XPath for defining a variable. XPath expressions are used to navigate through the sections and nodes in the XML message. At runtime, a new section is created in the XML message in the section R with the transformed data. This is the final unit for week one. Thank you for attending this week. We hope that you enjoyed it. We wish you all the best for the weekly assignment. Next week, we want to show you how to build an integration scenario.